MRI has been a key technological advance for multiple sclerosis back since the early 80s when it was first utilized that no other tool is as sensitive as picking up the lesions of multiple sclerosis. And we know this because individuals can have 10 to 20 MRI lesions for every one that expresses itself clinically. So it's remarkably sensitive. It's been very useful as a surrogate for diagnosing multiple sclerosis, and now we're using it to follow the illness. Um, and so we are routinely scanning individuals over time. We haven't yet developed the criteria for just how and when to change someone if their MRI is changing, but it's been a very useful tool for gauging disease activity. An important thing we have learned over the past five, 10 years is the importance of MRI MRI to augment our understanding of the disease. So the patients may be looking fine, but if there are new lesions and active lesions in MRI, we know that that is a harbinger of bad things coming down the line. So even in patients who are clinically stable, when there is new or active lesions in MRI, that represents that the disease is not successfully controlled, and we generally move to a different therapy. Back when I was in training, we were taught, treat the patient, not the test. MRI has helped us understand that you don't treat the patient or the test, you treat the disease. You treat the, the, the disease with the patient there and using tests to understand the disease. And MRI has helped us understand the disease, and so we use both the patient and the MRI to get at and successfully treat the disease.